And welcome to the State of European Tech. I'm Sarah Gamori. And I'm Tom Weymeyer, and this is the 10th edition of our annual report into all things tech in Europe. We've come such a long way since we did that first report launch on this very stage all those years ago. Our annual report provides a deep dive into all the health indicators of the European tech industry. And this 10th anniversary edition is a very special one. We're taking a look back, not only at the last year, but at the last decade, and what's to come in the future. So all of us here today know that the last decade has been completely transformational for our ecosystem, from talent to capital to company building. The developments are vast, and yet, despite all of this objective progress, this has been a year of many dispiriting headlines. A year of political and regulatory turmoil, lots of concerns about the EU's AI Act. Mario Draghi released that other report into European competitiveness. And there's some questions about Europe's ability to scale breakthrough companies. And all of that is set against these ever-present, unflattering comparisons to the US. Yep, we're all aware that Apple is worth more than the entire European tech ecosystem. So for us, it's a paradox that requires some scrutiny. And our aim now is to bring you some perspective, because it's never been so important. An ecosystem needs three core pillars to thrive and to innovate. Talents, capital, and mindsets. Over the decade, Europe's ability to attract and grow talent, unlock capital, and raise our ambition level has been transformed. We've built a world-class talent pool. There are three and a half million people working in European tech today. That's close to three million jobs created since 2015. It's growing at a 24% compounded annual growth rate, the same pace as the US. And to thrive, this talent needs access to capital. $426 billion in total funding has been invested in Europe in the last decade compared to 43 billion in the decade before. That is a 10 time increase in 10 years. To put this in perspective, in 2024, we are on track to invest $45 billion. So in one year, we'll have exceeded the amount invested in a whole decade. And there's also been a clear shift in mindset. There's a greater public understanding of entrepreneurship, of the attractiveness of the startup career path, and just more ambition. Experienced founders say today the public perception of entrepreneurship and the support ecosystem around them has improved. And it shows in the number of people pursuing careers in the sector. There are seven times as many people working in venture-backed tech companies in Europe compared to 2015. And the most ambitious of you out there as founders don't dream of building billion dollar companies. You aspire to grow to 100 times that scale. And so with this change in the foundations, this change in mindset, we're seeing more companies, more ambitious ideas built to solve harder problems. Founders like you are upping your game. The overall universe of companies has grown too in that last decade, up 4.7 times as a whole. There are 35,000 early stage venture backed companies in Europe, more than any other region in the world. Eight times more growth stage companies over the decade, and more than 350 breakout billion dollar companies. And this has all given Europe a growing track record of exits and world class returns. We have scaled valuable firms across sectors and across the breadth of the continent. We now demonstrate essential repeatability as the flywheel of talent takes skills and capital from one growth success to a new generation of firms. 
Cumulatively, we've seen close to $1 trillion in realized value across both IPOs and M&As over the past 10 years. Take ARM, 140 billion market cap, or add in a wise blockbuster listings. A decade ago, the scale of outcomes was unimaginable in Europe. It's a huge step change forward. Europe is also allocating its resources to sectors with the potential to solve huge societal problems. The people in this room are building technology to solve the needs of future generations. In 2024, 21% of all funding raised in Europe went to companies related to sustainability, double the ratio that we see in the US, which sits at 11%. And we're showing leadership in a number of sectors. Our survey respondents called out nearly 100 billion Spotify and 45 billion Revolut as the biggest European success stories from the last decade. But there's so many more. Klarna, Adyen, UiPath, ASML, Salonis, and Arm further prove the versatility of Europe's tech leadership from fintech to SaaS to chip makers to AI. On that point, we've seen over $30 billion AI companies emerge in the last decade. It's so important that we acknowledge these huge successes. Sure, these companies are not as valuable as OpenAI or NVIDIA. It's true. But we're in danger of failing to celebrate the likes of ASML reaching 300 billion market cap this year through that comparison. It's an unproductive mindset to fall into. So we're talking a lot about mindset today and in the report because despite all this incredible progress over the long term of a decade, there's real concern across the ecosystem about the way forward today. On the one hand, there's more new founders starting tech companies here in Europe than anywhere else in the world, and yet there are questions starting to be asked about Europe's attractiveness as a place to start and scale a tech company, especially by our most ambitious talent. We asked thousands of you what could stand in the way of Europe's full potential. And there are clearly frustrations about the challenges we all face when it comes to regulation, bureaucracy, access to growth capital, and scaling across what's still a fragmented European market today. In fact, close to half of respondents say regulation and bureaucracy is Europe's biggest hurdle. There are fears that these challenges could erode the very future success the ecosystem has set itself up for. So we've organized these barriers to success under six keys to unlock the future that European tech deserves. These span unlocking capital, to liquidity, to customers, to a more dynamic regulatory environment, global talent competitiveness, and finally, making more of the R&D potential that we have. Now, none of these individually is insurmountable, but bold, positive action is needed. We must, as an ecosystem, support those who are finding new ways to tackle these age-old problems. An example that we want to flag is EU Inc., a proposed new EU legal framework that will allow businesses to operate across what would be akin to more like a true single market, to scale back bureaucracy and to scale up the ease of doing business across European borders. One issue that we would like to highlight today and which consistently hampers Europe's scale-up ambition is the growth funding gap. Over the past decade, Europe underfunded its growth stage companies to the tune of $375 billion, which still doesn't come close to the $1.2 trillion that was invested in the US over the past decade. This is about right-sizing the supply of capital to meet the actual demand from companies started from Europe in the past decade. It's about adjusting for access to capital full stop, normalizing material round size differences and lowering dependence on US source of capital. That's a huge difference. Imagine where Europe will be if we solve this. But why does it matter? Well, 11% of US innovation is already powered by European founders today. And almost a quarter of European founders now say that they would like to start a company in the US today if they had to start over. We must stop this rhetoric in its tracks and keep the brightest, 
and best minds scaling from Europe. European pension funds currently invest just 0.01% of capital into European capital. A rounding error of the $9 trillion of assets that they are managing. But from the UK's mentioned house reforms to the French DB initiative or when in Germany, the beginning of a solution is on the horizon, which could result in billions more capital unlocked and available to European scale-ups. If European tech is to meet its full potential, scale-up capital is going to be essential. Right, so let me try and close it out. So entrepreneurship, technology, it's about having resilience and drive to solve incredibly hard problems. If rather than focusing on the scale of opportunity, we're instead disappointed by the shortcomings of today, how do we have the growth mindset, the founder mindset to build for a better long-term future? This mindset is, in our opinion, more so than any of the challenges identified by our survey or in the report the central barrier to European success. If we let our actions be clouded by fear and by conservatism, we'll undo the very thing that has been key to the success and the transformational progress we've had until now, and all that lies ahead in the future. So we hope to leave you with some data to inspire you about the way forward. Here's where Europe can and should be when we bring you the state of European tech in 2034 contributing significantly to GDP by adding an additional $5 trillion of value to the ecosystem, at least. Further strengthening our talent pool and accelerating the impact that we have on society with an additional 15 million jobs created by Europe's tech companies. And with that capital unlocked at scale, maintaining founder focus on solving society and the economy's hardest problems this is our path to unlocking the first trillion dollar companies from the region. This is Europe as a leader, not a follower. Conscious, dynamic, and ambitious, and most of all, unprecedented. A technology superpower for a new generation. Thank you. We've made a documentary to bring this to life. So here's a little taster of what you can expect to see tomorrow here at the Founder Stage at 9 a.m. And in the meantime, don't forget to take a look at thisstereopeantech.com for the definitive take on European tech. Thank you so much. In a nutshell, it's hard to tell the story because there's, there's a lot to it. This ecosystem has completely changed. It's just so much more complete now. Nobody would have believed this in the early 2000s. The things that can manage to succeed through that end up being the strongest and the hardiest. Some of the things that ARM was doing back in the 1990s were very, very innovative. We are motivated by building a really good, cool company. It was clear to us from the get-go that this is a technology that's globally applicable. Europe is the biggest market in the world. We should make sure that our companies can take advantage of that. It's a real path now to be a European entrepreneur. I sincerely hope that the companies here in Europe will build even greater and bigger companies than Spotify. In 10 years time, I'd love to see multiple trillion dollar companies here in Europe.